In this video we consider the linear regression model for time series data and we discuss the method of moments estimator. The linear regression model is given by yt equal to xt prime beta plus epsilon t. yt is a scalar, xt is a k by one vector, this is the transpose, so this is a row vector with k elements in it. So there are k elements in x, k explanatory variables. And then we have our vector of parameters beta, which is k by one, and finally we have a residual term. So the model we consider here is the linear regression model. We work with time series, so we have our subscript t, and t goes one, two, all the way to capital T, which is our sample size. We can write out the model in the following way. x1t, x2t, all the way up to xkt. And note that xt was a k by one vector, but this is the transpose, so we get a row vector. Then we have our column vector beta1, beta2, all the way to beta k. And finally, we have epsilon t. So that gives us our model. We have beta1 x1t plus beta2 x2t plus all the way up to beta k xkt plus epsilon t. So this is a conditional model for yt given xt. We would typically set x1t to be equal to 1, which means that we include a constant term in the model. So far, the model here is pure tautology. We can, for any yt, xt, and beta, always choose a value of epsilon t so that the relationship here is fulfilled. So we need to impose restrictions on our epsilon t that allows us to determine the unique beta that satisfy the equation. This is the issue of identification. To identify the parameters, we impose the restriction or the assumption of predeterminedness which states that the expected value of epsilon t given xt is equal to zero. So we condition on xt, and given that xt takes on a specific value, the expected value of epsilon t is equal to zero. Under the assumption of predeterminedness, we can think of the model as representing a conditional expectation. That means that the expected value of yt given xt is equal to the following. First, we simply plug in for yt from the equation we have up here. So the expected value of xt prime beta plus epsilon t conditional on xt. This is equal to the conditional expectation of xt prime beta, that's just xt prime beta, plus the expected value of epsilon t given xt. Under the assumption of predeterminedness, this latter term here is zero, and that means that the conditional expectation of yt given xt is equal to xt prime beta. Note that the assumption of predeterminedness implies that all the relevant information for the relationship between x and y has been included in the model. First, this means that there's no feedback. So xt influences yt, that's what we have in the model here, and we rule out that there's a link the other way from yt going back to xt. Second, all omitted variables must be uncorrelated with xt. Remember that all the omitted variables will be included in the residual term epsilon t, and here, assuming that the expected value of epsilon t given xt0 implies that all the omitted variables contained in epsilon t must be uncorrelated with xt. Next, let's, let's look at the implications of assuming predeterminedness. First, the assumption of predeterminedness implies a zero unconditional mean of epsilon t. The second and more important implication for now is that it implies what we call a moment condition. The assumption of predeterminedness implies that xt does not contain information about the expected value of epsilon t. This implies, in particular, that xt and epsilon t are uncorrelated. And this is our moment condition. To show that this is true, we start 
expected value of xt epsilon t, and then we use the law of iterated expectations to write this as the expected value of the expected value of xt epsilon t conditional on xt, like this. This is the law of iterated expectations. Next, we use the linearity. In here, we are conditioning on xt, so we treat that as fixed, and we can write it as the expected value of xt, expected value of epsilon t given xt, like this. Here we have our predeterminist condition. This is equal to zero. So here we have an expectation, unconditional expectation of zero, which is equal to zero. And that's exactly our moment condition. So again, the moment condition states that xt and epsilon t are uncorrelated. Finally, let's use our moment condition to derive our method of moments estimator. We start from the moment condition, expected value of xt epsilon t is equal to zero. And now we simply plug in for epsilon t, given the equation we have up here. So it gives us the expected value of xt, yt minus xt prime beta, like this. Next, we just write this as expected value of xt, yt, minus the expected value of xt, xt prime, beta. And this was equal to zero. If the expected value of xt, xt prime beta is non-singular, we can invert it. And that means that we can derive the population parameter beta, expected value of xt, xt prime inverse, expected value of xt, yt. So this is our population parameter. Note that beta here is a k by one vector. We have here a k by one multiplied by one by k. So this is the outer product. This is jointly or when multiplied together, a k by k matrix. It has to be non-singular for us to be able to invert it. That rules out perfect multicollinearity in the x variables. Finally, we have here k by one multiplied by one by one. So together, these are k by one. And we are then multiplying a k by k matrix with a k by one vector that gives us a k by one vector. So the dimensions match. Now, in order to derive an estimator based on the sample, we simply replace the population expectations by sample averages. And that gives us the method of moments estimator. So replacing the population expectations with sample averages is gives us the following. Beta hat is equal to the sample average from t equal one to t of xt, xt prime inverse. And then we have one over t, the sum from t equal one to capital T of xt, yt. Note that this is equal to the usual OLS estimator. But here we derived this from the moment condition instead of minimizing the sum of squares. Note that there were three requirements. First, we need the assumption of predeterminedness, which implies the moment condition that we use to derive the estimator. Second, for the sample averages here to converge to the population expectation, we need a law of large numbers to hold. That ensures that 1 over t, the sum of xt, xt prime, converges to the expected value of xt, xt prime, and likewise for the other part. Now, the law of large numbers holds if the data that we have here are stationary. So that means that both x and y must be stationary. And the third requirement was that x t x t prime should be non-singular. And that ruled out perfect multicollinearity in the x variables. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.